I think we've talked a lot in the past on the show about the various uh, agents we might use for blood pressure. You just mentioned some of them. There's the the RAS inhibitors, the ACEs and the ARBs. There's the thiazide diuretics, the calcium channel blockers, and then some of the second line agents, the the beta blockers, alpha blockers, um, hydralazine. I know I know that's a favorite of yours, uh, Jordy. <laughs> I love my knowledge. Um, myself in the head, yeah. right? Now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have a lot of met. We have had a lot of episodes this year. By the time this comes out uh, on MRAs and non-steroidal MRAs, the the those so those agents. But if somebody, because we see this a lot in clinic, the patient that just seems to be really anxious and their blood pressure is high, and how do you handle that situation? Maybe, uh, maybe both with treatment and just making sure that it's not just they're anxious in clinic. Can you talk about yeah. that? Yeah. And so I get a lot of these patients referred to me in my complex hypertension clinic because their primary care providers have been sort of at a point of, I've tried several medications and there's clearly an anxiety component and I don't know what to do. And so I get asked a lot, do I treat the hypertension when we know it's due to anxiety? And my response is, I'd say that nine out of 10 of these patients, no one's ever said, hey, how is your anxiety doing? Like, do you feel that this is a factor? And just asking them and getting their insight into it can really open a lot of doors. Uh, One of the things I prescribe most in my complex hypertension clinic is citalopram. Uh, It's incredibly effective at improving blood pressure, especially labile hypertension in people in whom there's an anxiety component. And many of them didn't realize there was an anxiety component until someone asked them. And sometimes it takes two or three visits to get that out and for them to finally trust you and realize that you're listening to them and caring about what they're dealing with. Uh, But it's so worth it because I just see incredible benefits from it. Um, So Talipram specifically, uh, there's some older pharmacokinetic data um, that I I actually haven't found. I've learned about this from my mentor, Ray Townsend, um, that had demonstrated that it is more, um, it has more sympathetic effects than other SSRIs do. And it tends to be more effective at lowering a lot of this blood pressure liability due to blood pressure uh, or due to anxiety. Sorry. So so Talipram specifically is it happens to be more effective in that space. Um, and I've, I've seen it. Um, I get a lot of people refer to me for uh, people suspect that they have pheochromocytomas and they don't. Um, and they've had metanephrines that are borderline elevated or maybe under, uh, we, we require metanephrines to be two and a half times the upper limit of normal or higher to really consider a diagnosis of pheochromocytoma. And they might be at two or one and a half times the upper limit of normal. And I talk with them, I figure out what's happening. And a lot of them had this prior backstory of uh, prior abuse, or they've witnessed something traumatic. Um, Some of them are people who are in law enforcement types of fields, for example, where they see, see people shot on a regular basis, unfortunately. And this this type of a person, it's almost become a phenotype that I see in my clinic where uh, talking to them about it, uh, suggesting therapy, and if they'd like considering pharmacotherapy uh, really can help a great deal with some of these paroxysmal hypertension episodes, including ones that have caused target organ damage like strokes uh, and, and can actually really help to get that under control. Often you need an antihypertensive medication as well, but uh, I've, I've had a couple of instances where all they needed was the SSRI. This is fascinating. Paul, have you heard, like, I... Yeah, I think I, 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 this... I read, Dr. Cohen, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like I've heard some, propo- like, you know, you hear socioeconomic status or lower socioeconomic status cited as a risk factor for hypertension. And obviously, yeah. like, the money itself doesn't matter. But one of the theories I've read about this is it's this sort of sympathetic responsiveness because you're just under so much stress that comes along with sort of the lower socioeconomic status, whether it's sort of finding money for food or, you know, affording visits and all that kind of stuff, just living around sort of heightened crime rates, like all those things yeah. contribute to this heightened sense of um, sympathetic state. But I, I think it's just, I don't know if that's been borne out. I feel it like has been. Just theorizing. Yeah. yeah. There's a, there's a good deal of literature now also showing that structural racism specifically yeah. is associated with an elevated stress state and increased risk of hypertension and, car- and adverse cardiac effects. So there's that this is being shown. Um, we're seeing this in a few other disease states as well. Uh, but this it, this stress of dealing with certain factors can definitely in itself cause these types of health issues. 